uh, Chairman Adroyes, uh, welcome to uh, AVG Corporate Center. Uh, you are in the AVG conference uh, area, and uh, we'll have a uh, lot to talk about this evening. Shelly, I look forward to it, and it's uh, good to see the turnout of people here. Very good. Uh, well, I was just explaining to uh, Chairman Royce the uh, influence of uh, my mother on our family, as well as the uh, uh, entire community in the Chicago area. Uh, she was a freedom fighter uh, alongside with Gandhi uh, in the 40s, and uh, she was also a, a big-time educationalist, a self-learned PhD in Hindi and Sanskrit. Well, I think uh, a lot of um, Indo-American families uh, have relatives that did spend time in jail at that time because the British swept up so many and, and charged them when uh, they were participating in the struggle for independence for India. Uh, and so um, your family, like many others, uh, made that sacrifice early on. You had parents that, that struggled for independence for India. Uh, and today, uh, they have a lot, uh, those families have a lot to be proud about. And actually, I'm proud to be born free. I was born after the independence, so in 48. So actually, in 1997, we had a big celebration in Chicago, yeah. celebrating the 50th anniversary of India's independence. Yeah. So I did that kind of anonymously. I just said... Uh, from an Indian American proud to be born free. Well, this is one thing, this was one thing Americans and Indians have in common, along with so many other issues, is that we were once uh, subjugated by Great Britain, and we're all proud to be born free men and free women. Thank you. Uh, Bailal is, uh, he is the president of our uh, organization, NIAPI, uh, National Indian American Public Policy Institute, that uh, took the delegation to, uh, to India in three years ago. Congratulations. I know, I know the chairman. I know the chairman. <laughs> the big picture, probably. Yeah, the big picture. And uh, uh, Amrinder Dhiman, uh, he's got operations both in India and as well as uh, Chicago. So he's sort of known as the uh, candy king. Mm -hmm. So a lot of candies they manufacture in uh, uh, candy, machines. Uh, candy machines and, and candy. candy. And, and candy. And candy. And candy books. Over two units here, uh, we supply to, and we still supply to all the big like you know, the, uh, Dubai, Mexico, yeah, yeah. Hershey, Brazil. Uh, that's a lot of happiness out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the chocolate makes you feel good. <laughs> this is the only industry which is not affected by recession. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. And uh, Bridge Sharma, uh, that this way you will be uh, hosted for dinner. Uh, this evening yeah, on the factory sure. road, yeah, and thank you, sir. he is um, uh, actually my uh, childhood friend. We have been together for a long, 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 long time, uh, for all, more than 40 years, maybe 45 years. Uh, yes. Me, see. I don't know how he had time to do anything except study, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe you were in the same class. No, we were in the same class. Oh, that explains <laughs> it. <laughs> so. Yes, right. <laughs> so he's got a, a pretty substantial business. Um, you'll learn about it a little bit more, uh, uh -huh. bringing jobs back to the United States. Good, good. He's also a founding uh, member of NIAPI. Congratulations. And uh, Manohar Sharma, Manny Sharma, um, he's uh, also a very prominent businessman, uh, now retired, uh, but uh, been very, very active with us uh, for a long time. Retired, but retired. <laughs> right. Um, Urvashi, she is. Uh, uh, she works for uh, uh, Nayapi, mm -hmm. and uh, she's. Uh, will be. You'll be seeing a lot more of her uh, in DC. Mm -hmm. Very, very good. Uh, Haribai, uh, he is uh, Haribai Patel. Um, he is the leader of probably the biggest community in District Eight here in this area: Carroll Stream, Schomburg, Bloomingdale. Uh -huh and all that, so uh, he um, uh, just a very popular leader, totally committed to um, uh, community service, uh, even though in his own right he's a businessman also, but he spends a lot of his time just community service. A lot of talent in your community, yes, no doubt about it. And we have a gene approximately 800 senior members. I see, I see. But a lot of the family members from those 800, there must be more than 2,000 voters, U.S. voters. And 3,000 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, um, 
Uh, Chairman Ed Royce uh, is, um, has agreed to be, uh, by the way, we're going to change the letters. HRC will be now RHC, uh, Republican uh, uh, Hindu Coalition, because that's how it is, RJC, so RHC, uh, RHC, so that's what uh, uh, he will be doing. He's agreed to be a co-chair. Uh, we, we've had a long engagement, um, you know, in the in the community. But uh, for me, it starts actually in the 80s. I was in the state senate, but in '92, I was elected to Congress, and I remember coming back. And some of you uh, recall when we formed the India Caucus, and there were 12 members. Uh, when I first joined, there were 12 members in the India Caucus. I helped build it up to 160 members of Congress, and so I like working with the community on objectives of increasing, you know, um, the, our, uh, our, our presence in this relationship between India and the United States. And Shally and I have had an opportunity now to work on a host of issues. Um, I appreciated uh, the recent visit we made, not only uh, meeting again with the Prime Minister, but also with every senior minister in the BJP government. Four and a half days, uh, four and a third days of great meetings on the last day, we had that conference with the BJP um, to look at long-term uh, policy issues, what we could do to strengthen the, uh, the relationship. But I'll speak about that later this, this uh, afternoon. So uh, that's sort of an overview of, of you know, the, the relationship as I see it. Uh, and Mr. Kumar and I have talked a lot about this in terms of these next steps. We appreciate, you know, being part of the... Uh, the steps in terms of uh, a more engaged focus with India, which is what we must be doing. Yes, yes. Yeah. The opportunity is now. We've waited a long time, and now we finally got things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As chairman of the India Caucus, I've I've um, had uh, frequent trips to India, but uh, and managed a lot of bills on the House floor, uh, the civilian uh, nuclear cooperation agreement with India, and so forth, and you trade could, uh, uh, Chairman, you could also talk a little bit about our, our struggle with. Uh, we worked together uh, for bringing Modi here. Yeah. Wait for his visa when we were fighting uh, for that. I, I think, you wanna yeah, that's the, that's the perfect that. example of, of how, regardless of how much work we've done in Congress, we end up with the administration sending exactly the wrong message at a, exactly the wrong time. But fortunately, by working together here to countermand that message, um, you know, I put out a statement as chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee welcoming the chief minister of Gujarat uh, here to the United States. I had had an opportunity to see him right after the uh, earthquake in action, and I know how decisive he can be. Yeah. We, we flew, flew into Bouge the day after the earthquake. He was bringing order out of chaos, and I've seen what he's done with Gujarat State to uh, make it the powerhouse in India. And my thought was, well, here's an opportunity to have a future prime minister of India who will, who will lead, and instead of, uh, you know, instead of welcoming this, uh, we had exactly the opposite attitude. So we from the administration, so we, from the administration. So we put out that welcome, and indeed, um, when he did arrive in New York, I was able to see him again uh, in New York. Had um, sat next to him during the dinner in New York, and then again had the meetings in Washington D.C. Uh, we have we have big plans for the future in terms of this relationship and the relationship between the Prime Minister uh, and, and, and Congress and the U.S. government. So uh, thank you very much for the chance to meet with you here. And I think in the main hall we can get into some of the details uh, sure. in this discussion, right? Okay. to get to know the then Chief Minister of Gujarat. And I have to tell you that, that Chief Minister Modi was a very impressive individual to me. The first time I met him, an earthquake had hit Gujarat. 
And we sent in a plane, I was on that plane with the head of USAID and uh, a counterpart, Mr. McGovern and I, we, uh, McDermott, Mr. McDermott and I flew in, it was the day after the earthquake, and I had an opportunity to see the chief minister at work trying to bring some measure of order out of the chaos. And let me tell you, he was hands-on. He knew what he was doing. And as he directed those efforts, and his USAID was just beginning to get involved in this, I could tell that this was a chief minister who had the leadership qualities. But then what I want to share with you is that in our trips, in our trips to India, we had an opportunity to see what was happening. And out of the ashes of that earthquake, we saw how Gujarat was becoming the anchor, you know, the economic engine, and how the leadership coming out of Gujarat State, how his leadership was having such an impact on economic reform and economic growth, all right? And at that point, it, became, it began to become clear that there was a possibility that he would run. And one of the issues that Shally and I have had discussed was the importance that when he did run, that we in the United States would be welcoming, you know, with extended invitation. But, as Mr. Kumar has told you, the opposite happened. So, for our discussion, what I did as chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee was to extend an invitation to him to come to the United States in the middle of that campaign. And what Shally did was organize a trip, and what some of you were involved in was that trip, uh, by members of Congress to India in order to extend an invitation. When uh, the Prime Minister was elected and was in New York, I had the opportunity to um, sit next to him during the dinner and, and to be on the platform with him during his historic speech here. I have to share with you that in my meetings with him, he has reasserted his desire to deepen this relationship with the United States. And in the recent trip with delegation that I led uh, to Delhi, we had four days, over four days of meetings, and four and a third days, and the last meeting was with the think tank of the BJP. And I presented my paper and I listened to the papers of those. By the way, during those meetings, we had the opportunity to exchange ideas with every single minister, you know, uh, in the government of India. Now, that's how many meetings we had besides meeting with the Prime Minister. On every issue. And there is so much that we can do between the United States and India. Whether the issue is trade and investment, which could be a win-win, or whether the issue is humanitarian uh, work, or whether the issue is security. And this is where I would like to see the relationship march now along the lines of the vision of the Prime Minister. And this is why I think the meetings that we've had have been so helpful in setting the foundation for that, in preparing our members in Congress for this. And, uh, and that's why I'm particularly delighted at this point in time to be Chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, because I can see the work we've done. Over the years, I've had the opportunity uh, to attend the International Fleet Review and, uh, you know, see in Mumbai. I, I should share this with you. Twice in Mumbai, I've stayed at the Taj. Once uh, with my wife, Marie. And I remember watching that night as the, as the information was coming in about the attack on the Taj. And we were watching the destruction of that hotel which represented uh, when I've been at the, at the Taj, that was one cosmopolitan place, you know? There were people from all over the world staying there to do business in India. And now it was the subject of a target for destruction. And what was so galling about the aftermath of that is that when the perpetrators were tracked down, when the evidence was there, and you've all listened to the tapes that night of the orders being given to those young men to assassinate uh, those individuals. When all of that was discovered, 
and the perpetrators were caught. Some of them had been at the LET campus in plain sight, all right, in, in Pakistan. We've yet to see them held to account. We've watched one of the main perpetrators being under house arrest and then released. This is another issue where after 9-11, I said the United States have joined India in the war on terrorism. Because after 9-11, we understood in the United States, we can understand what it is like in India to be subjected to terrorism. So this security front, this need to exchange at the highest levels. I've met with the head of uh, counterintelligence in India and with the, with the uh, top echelon of those dealing with security issues. We need real-time information sharing. We need to go after and, and root out terrorism. And we need to do it together. Because, as I say, at the end of the day, the goals, the values that India holds are the goals and values of the United States. These two great democracies need to be working together as close as we can. And we need to understand that this should be the preeminent focus of our foreign policy in Asia. So uh, I'm delighted to be invited here to say a few words with you uh, this afternoon and maybe after, afterwards uh, we can get into some other issues, but Shelley, thank you very much. Oh, Ellen G. Sure. This is another issue that's very important to India and the United States. Here in the United States, we're at a point now with LNG, you know, we're, we're at a point in terms of gas where we're capping wells where we're, um, we're flaring gas. And in the meantime, in the meantime, there's this great demand. I talk about energy with respect to India. This is one of the reasons I worked on the Civilian Nuclear Energy Agreement uh, with, with India was for nuclear energy. But the other aspect of this is LNG. And so, so we have the capacity to send an enormous quantity of LNG through uh, the Gulf. To India. And I've probably sat through a dozen meetings now with U.S. officials, with Indian officials, trying to bring people together to get this done. But one of the problems that India faces is India needs uninterrupted power to the grid. If you're an investor in India, you know, and you're in a state and you don't want to have to put in diesel backup generators, you have to have confidence in electricity generation. This is what is helping India grow and meet its demands. But it's also an issue of creating a situation where India can grow with cleaner burning fuels. And so, you know, from the standpoint of using LNG instead of coal, it's a win for the United States. It's a win for India. It will create more opportunities, more economic growth. It is something that we're working on, but it is something that we're pushing very hard in Congress right now to make certain that legislatively, we force this issue. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, another issue that we're working on, I got my, my start uh, in college, you know, it was kind of radical at the time that I went to university. And I remember the belief, you know, that, that the hard left had. But uh, I heard a speech that Ronald Reagan did. So I became active in Youth for Reagan. And as a result of that, um, as an officer in that organization in the state of California when I was in university, uh, one of my responsibilities was to go and explain market liberalization. You know, free markets, why we want to liberalize markets around the world, why we want to liberalize the economy. Market economy is a good thing. I uh, command and control the old socialist model it doesn't lead to prosperity. And so uh, in, in part of that effort, I got to know many who felt like I did. That, that part of the answer was opening up a free economy. We saw it, by the way, with IT. Just and you've had a part of that, Shelley. We've seen what productivity can do in terms of creating opportunity for people. And you've seen it in India. You've seen it in California, certainly, and in Illinois. So. Um, uh, I, I did get active with, with Reagan's efforts there. And I think the idea now of a 
with Republican Hindu coalition, which Shally has begun to organize, uh, is a is a great concept. I, I think the idea of getting uh, more people involved in ideas, yes. these kinds of ideas, yes. why free trade, why uh, market economics? Because they work. Why should we be focused on security? Because it's important. Look what happens when terrorism runs wild. We need we need to have a discussion of these issues. And I think in that vein, uh, as as uh, you have articulated. And here at this center, um, I think uh, it's a proper role for a, a discussion of this. Um, you know, this is an area where we need, with the power of ideas, to talk to more young people about the future and more of our candidates about what we've learned, for example. And one of the issues I've worked on is how to create more trade between India and the United States. Uh, for those who don't believe in, in trade, I would just remind them, we are 5% of the world's population here in the United States. You know, the markets that we want access to and the ability to show people what we can do with free markets and free minds, think about what happened in the 1930s when those who actually wanted to shut down trade were successful. They pushed for those high tariffs, you know, the sweet uh, Holly uh, tariff bill. They, they pushed. Uh, legislation that set such a high tariff that the same reciprocal treatment passed in Europe, passed in Asia, passed in Latin America, and there you had a situation where the world was already going into recession, <coughs> into a depression, and that action pushed us deeper into depression, pushed the world. Economists understand this today. This is something that Reagan understood. The opposite approach is one that, in a fair way, liberalizes markets, opens trade, gets the United States cooperating and working. And where do I want to see that cooperation focused? With societies that share our values in terms of rule of law, share our values in terms of democracy. And one of the things I've done with the committee, I'm getting the focus on some of these studies, the Pinky study or the Wall Street Journal work, that show that returns on investment in India far exceed investments in countries where they have a stifled system without the freedoms that India and the United States enjoy. And I know this is the view also that the Prime Minister holds, that if we can create more trade investment between India and the United States, by those of us that share this philosophy, of more trade, more investment, uh, this is going to be important for the future. Thank you. Uh, I actually uh, attended uh, a week or I think by two weeks ago, uh, uh, for three days, a conference of the uh, uh, Republican Jewish Coalition. Republican Jewish Coalition very, very powerful organization. Uh, three days I was there, and an idea was born, uh, actually encouraged by a uh, lot of different people, actually in the uh, U.S. Congress itself, uh, to start uh, the equivalent uh, Republican Hindu coalition, uh, an organization that will uh, push for uh, a better understanding of our faith, and uh, uh, as well as uh, uh, our economic principles and how we operate, uh, what our vision is. And um, uh, I want to thank uh, Chairman uh, Ed Royce uh, to agree to be uh, co-chair of uh, the RHC. And we have our Honorable uh, Council General uh, here, and uh, I'd like to have him uh, say a few words. First time uh, Council General, you are here in the Rana Reagan uh, Center. This is uh, uh, this is actually a, a building uh, owned by ABG, provided free to the community for having any uh, community functions uh, in this uh, building, and of course, it's uh, uh, named after our uh, what we believe to be the greatest president of the 20th century, President Reagan. 
and uh, also uh, Maharana Pratap, the, uh, the greatest uh, warrior uh, and savior of uh, uh, India uh, in, our, in the 15th century. So, welcome to uh, Rana Regional Center, headquarters of NIAPI, National Indian uh, Public Policy Institute, and I'd like to uh, hand it over to you to say a few words. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen, honorable, uh, con uh, honorable member of uh, Congress and chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, Congressman Edward Royce. First of all, it's my great pleasure to welcome you uh, to Chicago uh, on my own behalf also because I represent uh, the nine states of the Midwest and you're more very welcome in this vibrant uh, community. And I thank the NIIP for having extended me this invitation to come and uh, join you in this uh, very momentous uh, occasion. I am just flying, I just flew here from uh, Indianapolis where some of you must be aware that there is a very big event which took place today was the Maha Abhishekam or the consecration of the biggest temple in Indiana and that was in Indianapolis. So it was uh, a tough task for me to kind of rush there in the morning and be in time to be here at 4 o'clock. So, uh, so that it, uh, the and uh, I, I was listening to your uh, very pertinent comments uh, on India-US relationship. Uh, you touched upon some very important aspects. First aspect you touched upon was the terrorism. Uh, definitely, um, we share the concern of the United States, and the United States shares the concern of us. It's not like your concern or my concern, because terrorism is a global concern now. And um, uh, we know very well that the, the leadership on both sides, uh, uh, President Obama on the US side and the Prime Minister uh, Sri Narendra Modi on the Indian side and the entire uh, machinery on both sides are geared up uh, to ensure that not only we make our two countries secure, but we also work together globally to make the globe secure. So this is the kind of relationship. You also talked about the importance of trade uh, to bind the two countries together. It's extremely important because one thing which uh, uh, we should know is that despite the fact that the U.S. is, uh, is a very big uh, market for us, the balance of trade is in India's favor. It is one of the top three, top two trading partners of India. We have a trade of $120 billion, including goods and services. Let's take that to $500 billion. <laughs> yes. The leadership vision. But what we need to understand also is that you are not selling enough to India, we are not selling enough to you. When I was doing the uh, analysis of the trade of all states, in fact all the states in my, uh, my jurisdiction, as well as the states in other jurisdictions, it is actually around 2%, in fact in some cases less than 2%, what we are buying from US and what we are selling to US. So this is something we need to introspect that there is tremendous scope for both sides you know, to, to uh, explore the possibilities which are existing. Uh, you know very well that uh, the concept of uh, uh, sister cities has been in existence for a long time and we do have sister city relationships between different cities in the United States and in India. Uh, uh, very own Chicago has sister city relationship with the Indian capital, New Delhi. But uh, what we have thought also is that while this has definitely brought the communities together, we understand each other's best practices and bring about and, and, and implementing this. Uh, what we are also now toying with the idea of a partner state. That means some states which have certain strengths here and the states in India which have certain strengths, we should match them. This is something, uh, for example, let's say Michigan. Michigan has strength in, uh, in manufacturing, automobile. Why don't we have a partnership, uh, let's say, with Maharashtra? Pune is, uh, is the thing, you know. Like that we have uh, Gujarat which has a lot of strength in different, uh, uh, you know, fields. We can find out states which match those things. Iowa, for example, has strength in agriculture. We have several states in India which have strength in agriculture. So that kind of concept we are trying to build up on both sides. And I would seek your help. Uh, um, you also talked about the energy. It is an extremely important uh, area. We are a net energy deficient country. And uh, Congressman had just mentioned that there is ample gas available in Texas. And we are in, in serious negotiations with, with the United States. And I think if everything goes well and if we have friends like him with us, I'm sure this becomes a reality. We are looking at a target of 2018 for the first shipment from U.S. Uh, gas to India. Partnership, so it's going much beyond uh, you know the normal uh, trading relationship. And also.
also some of you may be aware that India uh, is uh, India and US uh, have a very strong defense cooperation uh, agreement. Now, whatever new innovations are made here in the United States, we are getting that immediately. It was just like uh, you know the, the partners in, in Europe and NATO. So it shows that it is a strong partnership, and also the fact that we are the net buyers of uh, the you know arms uh, from the United States and the things. So it's much of these arms are actually we are paying for it. It's not that. For, for United States, many times it happens that it's actually gifting it. So that also brings the thing, the very fact that in Boeing itself alone, we are creating like 50,000 jobs for only aviation related thing, which finds us in this unique uh, opportunity. We uh, thank you, uh, Honorable uh, you know, Chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, that you are there always as a friend of India. We look forward to you as a continued friend of India. And uh, we value your great ideas and we look forward to your direction to see how best we could put the uh, economic partnership between two countries in a manner that is going to Thank you very much. Council General, I'll take your lead and just as you have Chicago and Delhi, I'll do my best to bring Hollywood and Bollywood together. <laughs> Anybody has any questions? After the Israel and Japan, India is only one country. And how come the United States giving the one billion dollar aid, military aid to the Pakistan? We would like to have help from you to stop that. One of the steps that I'm trying to take is to focus the aid instead on education in, in Pakistan, especially girls' education. One of the pieces of legislation that I passed out of my, my uh, committee transfers a lot of the uh, aid to scholarships that will go to girls, and you, you saw the case recently um, with uh, Malala, and you saw, you saw the, the, the eight of the, um, of the original accused have been released. Um, I, I have been up uh, to see some of the projects uh, that we have put in for public schools. No, I know, and what I'm sharing with you is the attempt to focus what will help Pakistan the best for the future. The answer is, the answer is efforts directed at education, broad-based education, focused on the education of girls and boys. And the other thing that will really help is the closure of some 600 deal bending madrasas. And I've been trying to get those closed. There should be public education for those children so that those boys don't go through that process, because these particular 600 schools, it is understood in Pakistan, are the ones, these particular Diobindi schools, are the ones where boys are radicalized, and out of that comes the consequences that lead to terrorism. So this, this is where the focus should be. And the other areas are cooperation with India in intelligence in real time so that every lead that we get is shared. Now, I saw some of this uh, on the Mumbai attack. We had shared the information, but I will tell you there was an assessment where there was something we on the U.S. side failed to see and the Indian officials failed to see. We both thought, assumed, that the attack from the intelligence we had was going to be by land. No one foresaw that it was going to be, uh, yes, seaborne. And that is how they got the, the terrorists got around the perimeter that had been set up. So there's a lot to be learned also as we come under attack in the United States, as India comes under attack. But we need the closest cooperation with our ally, India. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to make a comment on, on that your question uh, also. Um, in actually 2011, uh, Congressman Ted Poe had introduced a bill to uh, cut off foreign aid to Pakistan, and we were uh, quite successful uh, at one time to have that uh, reduced by 50%. And uh, I, I must tell you that uh, uh, Chairman uh, Royce uh, was with us in on that bill, so he's already worked on that. Thank you. One of the things we worked on was trying to transfer funds instead of for that purpose 
instead to go through the um, diaspora in the United States, the Pakistani American community here, that know better how to get those funds not only into educational schools, but medical schools, give young people an alternative, give them something other than the Diobindi schools, but it's not going through the government to do that, you see. It's going through the community. It's going through those who are professionals, who had those experiences. You all have friends in these communities that you know uh, here in, in Illinois, right? And so they have a better sense of what can be done to help these different schools. Uh, and I think that education, a foundation where you build on this kind of education is absolutely essential. And it's not just the issue in Pakistan. It's also an issue, you know, in many, many other countries that we're dealing with right now. A lot of my travels overseas are focused on this issue of radicalization, you know, and what can be done in cooperation with the United States and other countries to make sure that the next generation don't fall under the sway of those who are trying to move children towards a position where they're at risk of being recruited into becoming terrorists and suicide bombers. Thank you. One more question. Chairman, I like your comments very much about the United States. Mm -hmm. And then sharing that uh, uh, in India. I understand. I understand that India is growing. India needs a lot of energy and clean energy naturally. And I, I, I appreciate your concern and your initiatives in that direction. And I appreciate also, Mr. Kassler's uh, uh, comments that there is concrete steps being taken and in 2018, it's supposed to be the first shipment. Uh, my question is this, I understand that uh, India is paying a lot more expensive for the LNG that they're importing right now, or what's costing them. US can sell it at a much less cost, so both countries can save actually, even if US raises the price, India pays a little bit less, both of them benefit. Both of them, uh, US can get more money, India can uh, save money, and both can get tightened up their relationships. But my question goes, uh, I have heard that there is some kind of special uh, preferred uh, partner relationship has to be there to allow LNG trade. Is that true? And when Mr. Gunsler said that concrete steps have been taken, is that true? Definitely. I just need your confirmation that definitely happening. Definitely be a in India. It's definitely true that if we change the designation, it would make it easier to go through these steps. And we are in the process of trying to do that, just that, myself uh, and others on uh, not just the Foreign Affairs Committee that I serve on, but also on Energy and Commerce. I'm cooperating with them. As I say, I've had a dozen meetings now to try to push this along. This, though, for those that do not think that we should ship energy overseas, let, let me share this with you to share with your friends. Just remember, again, we are flaring gas in the United States because there's a glut. We are camping wells and we have people that are not going to be able to be employed in the United States. And yet, as you correctly point out, we can produce energy at a much lower cost than in India. So it is literally a win-win for us to create jobs here at home, send this energy to India, and allow India to have uninterrupted power to much more of its grid at a lower price. This, this is in no, what we would call a no-brainer, unfortunately sometimes in Congress no-brainer has a different definition. Uh, we've got to use our brains here and do, and do what makes sense. And in this case, it makes sense for our ally India, it makes sense for us. Thank you. Yeah, Bridge, actually, uh, um, the, uh, most of the, uh, the chairman in the, in the House of Representatives that are uh, involved with the energy uh, who are also on the Board of Advisors of uh, RXC. Pete, uh, Pete Sessions. Uh, Chairman Pete Sessions, uh, Chairwoman Kathy Rickmans Rogers, uh, Chairman of Energy Committee Fred Upton. Uh, they're all in uh, for changing that status. As uh, uh, Chairman Ned Royce mentioned, uh, we're all uh, working on that uh, very diligently. Uh, with that uh, said, that being the, uh, the last question, I think it's the time for us to uh, leave. Let's give a big round of applause to the a great friend of Bharat.
India in the United States Congress. जो ये कार्यक्रम अच्छा हो गया वो चेयरमैन एडवाइस खुश गए हैं यहाँ से ये आप आप सभी लोग यहाँ पे आए थे तो आए हुए हैं इसलिए काफी इम्प्रेस हुए तो थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू और ऑफ कोर्स हरी भाई वी आर डूइंग थिंग्स टुगेदर ऑल द टाइम सो दैट्स a great but one uh, one thing which i want to uh, i want to talk about um jaise maine uh pehle bhi yahan isi speech mein bola tha ke mujhe uh, rjc republican uh, jewish coalition unhone uh, las vegas mein bulaya tha ये दिखाने के लिए कि जो जूश लोग हैं वो कितने अट्ठे इकट्ठे हो जाते हैं वो आ, उनकी पास में कितनी पावर है क्योंकि वो सब इकट्ठे हैं तो उनके साथ में कितनी पावर है तो वहां क्या देखा 400 मेंबर थे उनके और उनकी पावर इतनी है कि सभी प्रेसिडेंशियल कैंडिडेट हर एक प्रेसिडेंशियल कैंडिडेट वहां पे था और जो प्रेसिडेंशियल कैंडिडेट अगर यहां पे आते हैं तो हम तो जो इंडियंस जो हैं और दूसरी कम्युनिटी में है वो तो उनके पास फोटो बनाने के लिए उनके पास भागेंगे तो वो ऐसा हो रहा था कि मुझे बहुत स्ट्रेंज सरप्राइज लगा कि वो जो थे दस प्रेजिडेंशियल कैंडिडेट वो भाग रहे हैं सभी उनके लोगों के साथ हाथ मिलाने के लिए तो उनकी इतनी पावर है उनका जो जितने वो हैं यहाँ पे जूश लोग हैं वो सिर्फ अब भारतीय मतलब हिंदू जो है तकरीबन हो गए हैं 2.8 मिलियन और वो है जूश जो है वो है 6 मिलियन 6 मिलियन तो सिर्फ आदि हैं लेकिन उनके पास पावर कितनी है तो उन्होंने खुद मुझे आरजेसी का क्योंकि मैं जूस तो नहीं हूं लेकिन उन्होंने वो ओपन है तो उन्होंने मुझे मेंबर बना लिया और एक्चुअली मुझे वो डायरेक्टर बनाने में सोच रहे हैं और उन्होंने मुझे आइडिया दिया कि एक रिपब्लिकन हिंदू कोलेशन होनी चाहिए जैसे जूस कोलेशन होती है वो ऐसे ही रिपब्लिकन हिंदू कोलेशन होनी चाहिए क्योंकि हमारे में कभी ऐसा हो जाता है कि हम आ, सब लोग थोड़ा हिंदू बोलने से थोड़ा घबरा जाते हैं वो वो बोलते हैं कि भी हिंदू से नहीं नहीं हम तो सेक्युलर है सेक्युलर है सेक्युलर है डरते हैं वो तो वो कहते हैं नहीं भाई क्योंकि इसमें इसमें कोई आ, आ, कितने हैं वर्ल्ड में हिंदू कितने हैं 1.2 बिलियन तो उसमें कितनी जो है पॉपुलेशन है हिंदुओं की तो और हमारा जो है सबसे पहला धर्म है क्रिश्चियनिटी मुस्लिम और ये सब बाद में आए हैं तो हमारा तो 25,000 साल से हिंदू धर्म चल रहा है तो इसलिए क्यों इसे इसे से क्यों डरे क्यों उसे उसको नीचे दबा के रखें तो इसलिए हमने सोचा कि रिपब्लिकन हिंदू कोलेशन बनाया जाए और मुझे इसमें सरप्राइज ये हुआ कि जैसे मेरे को आइडिया आया तो उनसे बात की तो जैसे चेयरमैन ही इनके सीनियर चेयरमैन हैं इनकी बहुत पावरफुल हैं बाय द वे ये जो है एड रॉयस वगैरह इनकी बहुत पावर हैं जैसे ये यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स में रैंकिंग अगर करें तो चेयरमैन एड रॉयस वुल बी लाइक सेवन्थ और एट्थ मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट पोजिशन होल्डर इन दी यू गवर्नमेंट So, तो बहुत तो इनका सभी का एक आइडिया लगा कि हाँ ठीक है और उन्होंने मुझे इनकरेज किया कि रिपब्लिकन हिंदू कोलेशन बनाओ अभी बनाओ तो वो हमने अब चालू कर दी है तो उसका पहला प्रोग्राम फाउंडिंग मेंबर्स जो का मीटिंग होगी जुलाई ट्वेंटी को जुलाई ट्वेंटी को वाशिंगटन डीसी में तो वहां पे सभी कांग्रेस 
के जो चेयरमैन हैं सभी लीडर्स जो हैं वो उसको उनको ब्लेस करने के लिए आइडिया देने के लिए आएंगे सो मैं सिर्फ आपको थोड़ा आई वॉन्ट टू ब्रिंग यू अप टू डेट थैंक यू अगेन थैंक यू शाली कुमार आपने जो बताया कि कम्युनिटी की ताकत क्या होती है वो आपने जो ही कम्युनिटी के बारे में हमें बताया हम सब जानते हैं अपने जितने जितने इंडियन बैठे हैं यहाँ पर उसे मालूम है कि अपनी क्या कैपेसिटी क्या कर सकते मगर अपने इकट्ठे नहीं होते इसकी अपनी थोड़ी मजबूरी है कमजोरी है जैसा कि नो ऐसा क्योंकि अपने कभी साथ नहीं आते कभी कोई कोई मुझे ऐसा बोलता है कभी मैं उससे बोलूँ यार ये काम में आ जाओ सर बोला कि मुझे क्या फ़ायदा है देखो कैसा सोच है अपनी ये तो गलत तरीका है अगर आप ऐसा सोचोगे कि मुझे क्या फ़ायदा अरे कम्युनिटी के लिए काम करते हो कम्युनिटी के लिए इकट्ठा हो जैसे उसने बताया जो कम्युनिटी इतनी है मगर अपने कितनी पॉपुलेशन है इतनी हिंदू और इंडियन की इतनी पॉपुलेशन यूएस में अगर आप साथ मिलकर सभी एक दफे कोई पेशाब करेगा सब मिलकर साथ में तो कोई भी आदमी उसमें बह जाएगा इतनी ताकत मगर वो वो जरूरी है साथ रहना मेरा एग्जांपल वही है कहने का मतलब कि आप अगर साथ में नहीं होगा अकेले अकेले कहीं भी पेशाब करोगे दर इज नो वैल्यू यूनिटी इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डू यू नो मुझे कभी कभी ऐसा लगता है कोई बोलता है यार मुझे क्या फायदा देखो किसी सोच है कितना परसेंट वोटिंग करते हैं एक दफे लास्ट इलेक्शन में मैंने मंजू के बारे में दो चार लोगों को फोन किया तो एक दो लेडीज ने मुझे जवाब दिया था कि मुझे क्या फायदा है अरे फायदे की बात है वोटिंग इज योर राइट आप इतनी कैसी गलत सोच करते हो अगर कम्युनिटी के में लिए नहीं खड़े रहोगे तो कहाँ पर रहोगे आपका कोई आवाज नहीं सुनोगे आप जैसे शाली कुमार ने बताया वो गोरे लोग के पीछे अपने भागते वहाँ आपने देखा जो इस कम्युनिटी के लिए लीडर उसके पीछे भागते थे यूनिटी इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आपको मालूम है अपनी हिंदू कम्युनिटी की कितनी वोटिंग होती है वेरी लो मुस्लिम कम्युनिटी कितनी करती है नाइन्टी फाइव परसेंटेज आप सोचो जब भी तुम्हारा कभी इंपॉर्टेंट होगा जब तुम एक हो गए साथ चलोगे सबके साथ जब भी उसका विकास होगा ये मोदी ने वही सूत्र दिया सबका साथ सबका विकास अगर सबका साथ नहीं होगा या तो ऐसा सोचता है यार उससे मुझे क्या लेना देना ये ऐसा है ऐसा दैट डोंट थिंक दैट वे कभी भी नेगेटिव मत सोचो तुम्हें कितना भी प्रॉब्लम है मगर सोचो कम्युनिटी के लिए उसके भले के लिए अगर अपने साथ मिल जाए तो सब कुछ हो सकता है नथिंग इज इम्पॉसिबल इन द वर्ल्ड थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू वंस अगेन अब अपने शाली कुमार थैंक यू वेरी मच बिकॉज डू यू नो दिस टाइम टूडे इट इज़ वेरी गुड ऑपोर्चुनिटी ए ड्रॉइस मैटे शाली कुमार जो बात तमने करी एनु के वजन है ही जा चेरमेन अमेरिका प्रेसिडेंट पी एक थी सातमा व्यक्ति आए थे एनी अंदर एनी गणना थाई थे तब विचार करो ये व्यक्ति ने अँ अपनी साथ लई आया इट इज अ प्लेजर फॉर अस के एमना नहीं तो वेरी डिफिकल्ट है एना करव अपना मेटे एक सारी नसीबनी बात है कि आई मोटी व्यक्ति ने जेनी सारी पोजिशन से मौको मिलो अपने तक मिली थैंक यू शाली अगेन इट इज रियली वेरी गुड फॉर मै सीनियर ग्रुप बिकॉज ऑफ हेल्थ अदरवाइज देट इज नॉट पॉसिबल वी के नॉट मेट इट इज इम्पोसिबल फॉर अस बिकॉज अवर ग्रुप इज अ वेरी स्मोल ग्रुप बट इट इज राइट नाव एक्चुअली डू यू नो बिकॉज ऑफ हेल्थ राइट नाव वील डेफिनेटली वील गो स्टेप बाय स्टेप थैंक यू अगेन